Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to talk to you about, I actually want to react to an interview that Peter Beck gave um, for the uh, this off nominal channel. And th the first one is going to be sort of a joke. Uh, Peter Beck said something that made a lot of people want to sell their Rocket Lab shares um, on Twitter. And the second thing is he explains what is the difference between Neutron and Starship and the materials that they use and how they think differently. And I think it's something that Rocket Lab investors need to hear. So stay tuned. I also want to quickly uh, thank the channel members. We have 12 channel members um, who support this channel and we have four patrons. Thank you so much, guys. Um, you're really helping me out. And uh, let's begin the video. This is the one that made people want to sell Rocket Lab. Are you drinking coffee yeah. or anything, Peter? Got nothing? No, no. I, no, you know, I, I can't drink coffee. It, it, uh, it, it puts me to sleep, to be honest with you. I have <laughs> like a millisecond, a millisecond high, and then I'm just instantly asleep, which, which is <laughs> frustrating as all heck because I love the smell of coffee. I love the taste of coffee. I love everything about it, but I just can't drink it. So this was the one. Um, a lot of people were like, there must be something wrong with him. We can't invest into a company where the CEO cannot drink coffee. Fun fact, I also uh, don't drink coffee. I had major problems with sleep a few years ago. And uh, I started watching YouTube videos on um, what might be causing it that I just cannot sleep and you know, have constant insomnia. Came across a video by Eric Berg. And he said, there are those idiots who drink five, six coffees a day and then they wonder why they can't sleep in the evening. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's me. So uh, that was the end of coffee for me. Anyways, that was sort of a joke. Uh, and now we come to the real part of the video. Let's go. Let's keep carbon fiber theme for a minute. Cause, uh, so you've got electron and neutron, mm. big size difference here. Uh, mm -hmm. are there, I'm curious to know in the era that we're in now where, where Starship is doing its thing as a stainless steel rocket, and there was a whole branch of its mm. history that was going to be carbon fiber. And it's still mm. like the one question I want to ask Elon Musk of like the day that they decided to make that switch or the day they like officially said, we're switching, we're trashing that big mandrel thing that Jake was talking yep. about. We're going stainless yep. steel direction. Um, and I feel like that's been explained in various ways throughout the years, but I'm curious in the life cycle of neutron design, you know, did you put up other options when you were thinking about a bigger rocket? And what was it that said, no, what we started with the carbon fiber branch here is the right decision for something as big as neutron? Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. So, so he, here's the thing, like there's, there's, there's no silver bullet in this, in this, in this industry, right? Everything is an just, engineering just compromise. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything is a compromise, right? So, um, the advantage with stainless steel is, yeah, yep. Yeah, so thermally, it's 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 got some great resistance. Um, but the advantage with it is that if you want to iterate quickly, you can just weld stuff together, and move and change designs very very quickly. Now the downside with composites is you have to build the tooling, to to you know to make the part. So when you build the tooling, it's very difficult to iterate on on that kind of outer mold line, if you will, because it's new tooling. So that that would make an iterative process very very slow. Now, the disadvantage with stainless steel is it's four times heavier per unit strength than stain than, than carbon fiber. So for the same strength, it's four times the weight. Now, um, the advantage with carbon fiber, obviously, is it's four times lighter for the same mass. Um, so there's, there's pluses and minuses. Now, if I'm, if I'm Elon and I'm looking at Starship, which where you're going to be doing a tremendous amount of iterative design, um, then the, it's not feasible to, to build it out of composite because the, the time it takes to build the tooling would, would not be conducive to a highly iterative approach. Stainless steel is wonderful. But, you know, the challenge with the stainless steel is it's very, very heavy. So where that, that, that you know, drives other trades is now you have to have extremely high performance propulsion systems. So you put all of the, the kind of, you know, compromise, if you will, you, now you've got heavy structures. You know, you just have heavy structures. So if you've got heavy structures, then you need higher ISP and higher thrust and higher performance out of your engine. And that's the trade you make. Now, the trade we made with Neutron is 
we know exactly the vehicle we want to build. There is no iteration cycle that's required. So we're happy to go in and tool that thing straight away. Um, now, we end up with very, very lightweight structures, incredibly lightweight structures. I mean, the upper stage, the whole upper stage five meter diameter tank of Neutron weighs the same amount as a Harley Davidson. So you know, everybody, you, you look. Oh uh, yes, like it's not just the Americans that the weird unit of matters. Everybody, all right. <laughs> Listen, back off. Yeah, Get out exactly. here with the dishwashers and my football fields. We got a new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Harley yeah. Davidsons. I no, love it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, you think a centaur's light, and it really is an amazing thing. But you know, our up, the, the neutron upper stage make makes you know centaur you know look look like you know an obese person. So, um, you know, it's, it looks like it's, a, it's, uh, he was trying to think of a big motorcycle and couldn't think of a bigger motorcycle than Harley Davidson. A rocket bike, maybe. Yeah. 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 But what that means for us though, is that if you, if you, if you kind of break it all down and you're trying to build a reusable rocket, what is the bit that from a re reusability standpoint is one of, is the most complex and that's the propulsion system. It's engines. So what it enabled us to do is it enabled us to build engines that have a very, very benign operating point. Because our structures are so light, our performance out of our engines need to be very modest. And look, if you're sitting on an aircraft and you're flying across the Pacific Ocean, hopefully coming to visit me in New Zealand one day, and you look out on the wing at that turbine, you do not want that turbine running on the ragged edge, riding the lightning. You want that turbine just sitting in a real comfortable place. And that's exactly what we've been able to achieve with Neutron is those engines, uh, their life will be, will be measured not in seconds, not in minutes, but in hours, if not more. So that, that was the engineering compromise hmm. that, that we made. So we've traded hmm. lightweight structures, you know, for put, put the challenge in, in the structures and taken all the challenge out of the engine. So does that mean like um, you're, you're coming to the end of the... Well, maybe not the end, but you know, you're you're deep into the development cycle for Archimedes, and mm. do you find that, that that played out? Like, do you do you find that the development of that engine, because it didn't have to push so many boundaries, like, did it happen easily and quicker than than it may have had you gone a different direction? Like, do you, do you feel like that that played out? Yeah. Look, I mean, look, engine design is always complex. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, we weren't worried. I mean, we, we were lucky to have, you know, a whole bunch of, of the, the SpaceX Raptor team um, came and joined us to develop um, Archimedes. And, you know, they're not, they're not trying to do pre-burners at 11,000 PSI. Um, <laughs> and, and like, it, like, you know, okay, a chamber pressure is, is, is like 2,000 PSI. So um, it, th that makes a, it's just a, a, a totally different, you know, the, our biggest challenge to date with Archimedes is actually getting the pre-burner to operate so cold, not so hot, um, you know, because it's 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 such a benign operating point that you know that that was actually the challenge of the pre-burner elements was to get them to light and run reliably at such cold temperatures. Hmm. So there you have it. This was a very exciting part to me. Uh, because it really gives a glimpse into how these two companies work uh, differently from one another. And it's also quite understandable. So in many interviews before, um, Peter Beck explained that there's somewhere between ULA and SpaceX, as in they also do a lot of iterations, but they do the iterations on the design phase of the, of the things. And it's a very, it's a very logical why, because, you know, they don't have a lot of money. And what does Ernest Rutherford say famously? Uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, so we had to think. And this is how Rocket Lab thinks. So he says that when they get down to actually building things, uh, as opposed to SpaceX, where they, you know, it's considered a good sign that they're like blowing things up. They don't want to see things blow up because they are doing the, uh, the iteration step you know, in the design phase. And uh, he basically said that the difference between Starship and Archimedes is that uh, SpaceX, look, is, is doing something that has never been done before. So obviously you don't know what you don't know. So you just want to get a thing up uh, in space, calm down, blow up a few times because then you know where the weak points are. But uh, Neutron is not that kind of a rocket, right? Like, it just has to go up and come back down, which has been done um, a lot of times by the Falcon 9. They, as you heard, they have a lot of SpaceX people there. It's been also done 
by the electron uh, many times. So I think it's uh, the, the problem that they're trying to solve and also that they're not recovering the second stage. So the first stage, I believe the max speed that it goes up is like seven to 9,000 kilometers per hour. And that's the one that it has to lose uh, coming back down. The second stage, the one that goes to orbit has to go at a speed of like 26,000 kilometers per hour. So way more uh, speed and to lose all that speed, that's where the heating and you know all these uh, issues really, really uh, come up. Um, so yeah, it, it was very, very interesting to, to hear also that they're having trouble with the opposite um, that the Archimedes engine is like, they're having trouble starting it uh, too cold. By the way, the Archimedes hot fire test, I think this week is the week when, when we will see something. Um, and on top of it, the Wild Wild Space movie by Ashley Vance uh, premiered in Washington, D.C. I thought that it would be like a worldwide release and we will be able to watch it on HBO. I'm trying to find out how and when uh, we all can watch it. Uh, I got some date that was like the 17th of July when that movie is going to be available. And by the way, Ashley Vance promised that he would come to a Rocket Lab Weekly uh, after the film was released. So that is going to be very exciting. And I will let you guys know as soon as I find out how we can get access uh, to this exciting movie. Anyway, so let me know in the comments if this video gave you any value. Please make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to go ahead and support the channel, you can become a channel member. That would make me very happy. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.